I love working with wood. I think it's just a beautiful material. It's had a life and it's got stories to tell, which when you start processing timber, you see that firsthand. So you can even see which way a tree has been leaning in the wind, for example, because of the way that the grain has, has, has grown. And it's, it, I, I find it fascinating and every piece is different. I was about 16 years old. It came about through my brother and my uncle. My uncle had been involved in wood turning as a hobby for quite a considerable amount of time. He upgraded a lathe and basically my mum and dad bought it for my younger brother, James. And he got that one Christmas and I really wasn't that interested to begin with. And I just kept going into the garage and having a nose there and seeing what he was doing. And we were very fortunate at the time because we had a wood turning shop in Burstall, just down the road. And we we kept going down there, he'd go down for wood and he started having a few lessons and you could buy tools there, you name it. It was completely self-contained was this turning shop. And it had some, it had little shows on, it had fantastic wood turners coming and teaching. And then I just used to go down with him for something to do. Then went to some of the larger shows to help out. And just you just meet more and more people and it just sucks you in. I, I set up um, my own little com company in about 2013, I think it was. Uh, my own little business, um, The Tiny Turner. Um, which was a name that I'd had rattling round my head for... Uh, for a while actually it was believe it or not it was just a name to think of for an ebay account and it, it i don't really know where it came from but i just thought it was an amusing thing what with me being so small and being a wood turner it seemed to have a bit of a ring to it i am four foot ten and a half inches tall and the half is important to keep the turn inside of things more simple and let the wood do the talking if you know what I mean so you're kind of giving it a second life if you like and uh, that's I find that very fulfilling you can often put a piece of wood on the lathe and think I'm going to turn this out of it and then you actually start turning it and think it doesn't want to be that it wants to be this and you kind of you go you I, I go with that. I try and make the wood into what it wants to be. And it sounds like a very strange thing to say, but it, it really does kind of tell you what it wants to be. Sometimes you, you've just got to go with it. So it's, it's fantastic working with something that was living. And I suppose in a way it still is. It still moves. It still changes over time. So it's a fascinating material to work with. The wood carving... Um, we traditionally and the, the timber that I use most of all is lime which is quite a boring wood if you like there's not really a lot of grain going on so you are kind of decorating a plain wood with what you're cutting out of it um, creating form shapes and shadows so they're completely different disciplines you couldn't give up one for the other no way and combining them and finding ways of combining them is quite a lot of fun so quite lucky really to be able to turn to both disciplines and very, very lucky. I carved my fan art version of Errol and it was something that took, it was a six year process. Um, I had quite a bit of help and input from my carving tutor, uh, Michael Painter. And, um, but between us we got there and it was one of those projects that I just thought would never actually happen. Um, it was roughed out, it, I kept falling out with it, throwing it on to the side of the workshop, hiding it in a drawer. And then eventually I, um, I got more and more into it and the closer I got to seeing it finished, the more it made me want to work on it and eventually 
I've got him finished. So he's probably my biggest accomplishment. I'm very proud of him. He's my, my special boy. <laughs> he goes with me to all the shows and, uh, yeah. I think it was something like three o'clock one morning and I just woke up and thought, oh, I can make cupcake boxes and I could carve the tops. So I'm flying out of bed to try and find a piece of paper to try and sketch something down and then I don't forget about it. Um, and, I mean, and the pumpkin boxes... Um, I made a turn and carve pumpkin boxes and that were an idea. But I'd say the rest of my inspiration comes from just every day. Um, I always look to nature. I get a lot of, lot of um, inspiration from nature. So yeah, unfortunately there's a lot of skills that are getting lost because they're not getting passed on. So passing knowledge on is so, so, so important. And that's a big mantra of mine. Um, my, both my wood carving tutor and my wood turning tutor were both very eager to share their knowledge and their skills. And I think that that's, it's important. So that's a big aim of mine to continue this, my learning so that I can pass on my knowledge to other people as well because we don't want to lose it and it's not even it's not limited to wood turning and carving it's you know it's it, it, it it's across the board of traditional crafts i know that i have a dogged determination and that definitely comes from being little um as my mum would tell anybody and um, there's not a lot of things that i kind of let get in my way or let stop me if i get an idea in my head um I, I try really hard to follow it through <laughs>